Russian forces are starting to show exhaustion in terms of both equipment and personnel resources, while Ukrainian forces continue to demonstrate extraordinary capabilities with their drone strikes to repel the Russian onslaught. Recent heavy fighting occurred from the direction of Lyman, where the Russian forces refused to accept defeat in the Battle of Terni, and suddenly opened up a new vector of attack to prevent the collapse of their bridgeheads, and take back the initiative in their hands. Russian forces tried to make a decisive breakthrough that would enable them to secure a safe crossing of the Jerebits River and thus advance on the town of Lyman. Last time, the Russians conducted a series of massive mechanized attacks in a quest to advance along two parallel tree lines, however, all these attempts were successfully blocked by Ukrainian forces. That is why, in a renovated attempt to find a weak point, Russian forces decided to change the attack vector and try to attack further south, close to Yampolivka. Recently published video footage shows a series of recent attempts at Russia's new attack vector. Combat footage shows at least two tanks and a BMP-2 armored vehicle were detected in the early stages of the attack. Initially, the footage shows how the BMP-2 vehicle was hit by a Ukrainian FPV drone, preventing it from continuing the attack. The Russian infantry soldiers were seen trying to take cover but, unfortunately, were targeted by the FPV drone and were knocked out. In a subsequent attack Ukrainian FPV drone operators were seen destroying the BMP-2 to prevent its recovery. Footage later showed FPV drones hitting tanks participating in the attack, although the first tank received damage in the initial stages of the operation, it managed to continue the attack, initiating a forward charge and avoiding several impact attempts. The chase continued for several hundred meters until finally an FPV drone crashed into the tank and the crew was forced to get out and try to find cover. As for the second tank, it demonstrated unconventional withdrawal efforts, including activation of a smokescreen, however, a few seconds later, the tank was hit by a Ukrainian FPV drone and destroyed. According to the latest updates from Russian and Ukrainian sources, this new Russian mechanized attack not only completely failed, but it also allowed Ukrainian forces to completely retake control of the grove east of Yampolivka, which was considered a gray zone up until now. The reasons for this failure of the Russian mechanized attack along the Axis were threefold. Firstly, the Ukrainian superiority in reconnaissance capabilities and employment of FVP attack drones has become evident. Notably, the map of successful drone attacks in the area by both sides reveals an overwhelming advantage of Ukrainian drone capabilities that has dramatically compromised Russian attempts in recent weeks, particularly in helping to prepare an overwhelming response well in advance. Secondly, according to various Ukrainian sources, the Ukrainians have been able to rotate their forces in the area with fresh troops in recent weeks. Ukrainian Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sursky recently announced that rotations had begun in various directions on a widespread level since troops had not been rotated in many places for more than a year. Due to the rotation, Russian troops here had to face much fresher Ukrainian troops. And thirdly, it appears that Russian forces are beginning to show fatigue both in terms of equipment and personnel resources. The size of this mechanized assault was much smaller than those observed over the last few weeks, which is a clear indicator of exhaustion of the forces. A prominent Russian military blogger recently commented that elements of the Russian 25th Combined Army, which had been attacking the Terni area until now, have been withdrawn. It was unknown whether they had been redeployed in any other direction. Overall, Russian forces failed to advance on Terni, and the opening of a third axis of advance to the south resulted in the decimation of the mechanized units and the subsequent seizure of new positions by Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian forces continued to show a remarkable ability to repel these attacks in the area, aided by their reconnaissance and FPV attack drone superiority, the renewal of Ukrainian troops after the expected rotations, and a clear degradation of Russian forces in this area. Meanwhile, soldiers of the 12th, Azov, Special Purpose Brigade of the National Guard destroyed Russian IFV along with infantry during recent operations on the front lines. 
Video footage of drone operators' combat missions was published by the Comeback Alive Foundation. The footage shows how on one of the fronts, a Russian infantry fighting vehicle is likely transporting troops. The FPV drone operator spots the IFV and chases it behind it. After that, another Ukrainian drone recorded the results of the attack and then the Russian IFV caught fire. As a result of the successful combat mission of the soldiers of the Azov Brigade, perhaps Russia suffered losses not only in armored vehicles, but also in the manpower present in IFV during the operation. The Comeback Alive Foundation reports that to destroy the enemy, the Ukrainian army has used FPV drones with thermal imaging cameras. Attack drones with thermal imaging optics will allow the Ukrainian military to conduct operations in the dark and destroy Russian equipment and infantry under any conditions. Since its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia has suffered 463,930 soldiers and officers eliminated or wounded in action, including 950 in the past day alone. The Ukrainian armed forces have also destroyed 7,262 Russian tanks, 13,957 armored fighting vehicles, 11,867 artillery systems, 1,049 multiple rocket launchers and other equipment. The number is according to estimates reported by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ukrainform reported.